maybe I could um, be the frost wings and you could give me advice to beat your lava elf force, but I'm okay with going either way with this. It I doesn't set, matter. I, I set out all of the terrains from your article okay. and all the units. Well, I mean, after looking at what I, what I built, it's one of those that if you don't know, if you, if you're not really familiar with the game, it's not that great of an army. Because, I mean, look at it. You've got... And this was before we... This was before we knew the Mogi was uh, coming out. You know? Yep. This would be your pre-Kickstarter... <coughs> excuse me, army. Oh, yeah, because you, w you didn't have access to... You wouldn't think most people would have access to the Mogi... Being right. So rich. and that was one of the reasons why I put all the apprentices and uh, Magus in there. If I really wanted to go in and showcase what these guys can do, I would take these four and put into Magi, or at least a Magi. We could do this. We can move him over here. That would be a decent mage army. You would definitely want two Magi instead of. Uh, all the rest. Simply put, because the Magi is bar none one of the best. Uh, yeah. Yep. The you've got the four. The you've got a two. Your your ID is a three, so you've got two, three, two, four uh, hits. Yep. And you have a fifty percent chance of getting three mana or three magic. On a given roll, versus these guys. All right, so that's a two. Wings are okay; they're saves. Well, they're better than saves. You've got a two. You've got a three. You've got a one. See, the Magi doesn't have a one. You've got missiles, and you've got a two. So you have a fifty percent chance of getting two or higher. But there's always that. I'm going to call it a dunce roll. Yep. Scalders are terrible with that. Oh, gee, Scalders are absurd, but they also have some of the best risk-reward in the, in the game. Yep, Scalders and Goblins. Scalders better than Goblins for risk-reward. Holy mackerel, they're swinging. Oh, yeah. Because they have double face icon or double uh, ID icons on one face. Yep. The problem is, if you want to run Magic... You kind of do need Magis, because they're the most reliable magicians you have. In all honesty, if you wanted to make this specific army a lot uh, better, in my opinion, replace the Vindicators with the Bear Master. Because the Bear Master makes the entire thing faster, getting you to melee faster, against what, what usually, like this, is a mage army. <laughs> Ah, it's good to have you in here, uh, Kelrick, because we uh, we need this this kind of fresh opinion. When you have so many different ideas, it is really great for the community because they're not stuck with thinking there's an ideal. There's options, and it's well, how you want to play. And that's one of the things that has really hindered Crosswings, when you think about it. With the Magi and the Bear Master having about the same chance of dropping in a pack, which is one in about, I think, 40 cases. That's, let's see, doing the math really quick. 480 what, about, packs, yeah, 480 well, kickers. Yeah, it's a diamond in a Roth. Well, they, they say, forget the passives, forget the magic, because there's no way that I can run with this. But I do have a plethora of missile units and uh, a plethora of heavy melee units. Why do I even need monsters? I'll just run a missile army. Now, with the Kickstarter complete, we're getting a complete recast of the molds, which is making everything a lot easier to get a hold of. And I'm sorry about the, the collector's value of it. I know that it's, I know that it's crappy saying that you have a, uh, an extremely rare dice when... It's also one of the most useful for the passives that you're getting a hold of. And I mean, 
the Bear Master, while it only has one special action icon, is still one of the more powerful dice that you can get a hold of. Because it's fast and it hits hard. The only other two that we have access to that are fast and hit hard are the two small melee units. The cavalry is just fast. Okay, so how are they supposed to stay alive? They're one fly ID in their ID. They're... Well, the bear masters don't have fly. Bear ma- the cavalry do not have fly. That's right, they don't. I'm sorry. They, they have maneuvers, answers. and they have shield. <laughs> now, the uh, advocate and the defender have fly icons, but they also have maneuver icons. So you're looking at a 50% maneuver chance on those and a 50% melee chance on those. You go over to the Vindicator. He's got a save face. He's got a fly face. He's got a four fly face. His ID, two melee faces, and a smite. I think smite is one of those melee faces, actually. So you got your grunts and the melee units lightly armored and more like light infantry (laughs) or um, light melee. And the only heavy the he- only heavy melee unit that you have access to is the Vindicator. I've noticed a trend over my uh, my guides where it has been your heavy units have more attacks and more save uh, or more attacks per face and more save faces. Like usually, heavy melee will have a fifty percent uh, save chance and one extra icon per face to the light melee who actually have better maneuverability uh, options. That doesn't happen with um, uh, Frostwings. Frostwings, they amalgamated... Excuse me. They amalgamated heavy melee and light melee into the same melee unit, and then they gave cavalry cavalry with a rare light melee unit. Not to mention Earth. Earth Bang is going to be so good with Frostwings. Especially when used by a wolf pack <laughs> in the missile phase or the magic phase, but It'll really in the missile good. phase. Think about that. You roll during a missile phase. You roll the uh, the logo and a howl. So you put a chill wind on the terrain. The howl then puts a minus four on your opposing army. And then they roll for saves, which they take a minus six to. Yeah, you better make sure that strike nearly finishes them off, or at least gets rid of most of their melee units, because uh, you're going to be dealing with that chill wind yourself until you move the terrain, right? Not necessarily. You could leave, but it'll still no. be there until the terrain moves, right? SAIs bypass uh, subtraction effects. Oh, yep. And so the <laughs> frost wings, you have lots of flies that don't get... Exactly. Don't so, yeah, frost wings, wings earth fang, do it. <laughs> All day, every day. Have those wolves with little earth fang uh, axes in them. In their teeth. <laughs> I wonder if there was any coincidence to the release of Earth Bang coinciding with the Frost Kickstarter. Now, I have it on good authority that uh, in order to understand Earth Bang, you have to read the book. So I'm not... And notice also that what is the Frostwing's favored melee weapon? Axes. Earth Bang's an axe. Yep. Exactly. So I have a feeling that Earth Fang is in fact wielded by a Frostwing. I just haven't read the book yet. If you are thinking about doing um, uh, subbing in a, a separate species, Lava Elves love, absolutely love um, Frostwings, especially Apprentices. Because you get two of your uh, Necromancers right here. And you put them in your reserve uh, reserve army with maybe eight to twelve uh, apprentices, 
in an area, give them a couple of shields for good luck. And then you just cast Necromantic Wave on them, and they do whatever you need them to do. I mean, it, it's quite amazing what, what just two Necromancers can do. On the other hand, that can be pretty dicey, because they kill one of the Necromancers, there goes your strategy. And there goes 12 points of your army down the drain. Alright, so if you want to go ahead and take control of that army, I can give you my uh, opinion on it and how it's supposed to run. First off, let's maybe talk about these terrains here real quick. So we get in on this. The terrains? Um, okay. Because, because that's where you started off in your article, and I didn't know what to leave. I, I kind of assumed you had a dragon's lair for your lava elves, but then you mentioned each of these three terrains and, and them being good options. You need that grove. Because look at what your home terrain dice is. It's a tower. If you're running this many mages, if you're running a mage army of any type, like pure mages, you need a grove for those four uh, magic faces. So then you have over a 50% chance of getting the action you want from it so they can actually do something. In either case, either of these Feylands would have been suitable if you weren't, if I was, if the Frostwings weren't facing off against Lava Elves. But I think a huge right. part of this is probably denying the passive. That too. Because what's the Lava Elves' main ability? Volcanic, Volcanic mastery. mastery. Yeah. Yeah. You take away their ability to save, and yeah, <laughs> they're pretty much in the water. They're Trying to race you. Yep, I hear you. All righty. So now we've got so the rains. You definitely want to go for the grove. In this right. battle. In this battle. This specific one. And you would pro I would probably suggest the grove for 98 or 90% of your uh, matches. So you win. All righty. Am I going to want to go first? Choose my terrain. I think choose you want the terrain. terrain. You want the terrain. Remember, 90% or most of your army has those flights. So, yeah. You want the Lava Elves to go first. But, again, you're throwing out their uh, special, or their, uh, yeah, their special ability. I... All right. That would make for an interesting game right there. Yeah. So let's continue. Next, we are going to run uh, a magic action. You need to roll your, uh, your frost wings. Oh, magic negation. Exactly. Well, we don't have any uh, uh, graveyard right now. Yep, so no magic negation. No magic negation. There's also no deadlines in play, so. Yeah, that darn um, dragon uh, dragon lord, he's got the sneak attack during a missile at attack or magic action. Sneak attack inflicts X damage on an opposing army at this terrain with no save possible. Now... You have a unit in the in the UA. So how would that work? We've already tallied. We've already rolled. Okay, so that so magic negation wouldn't go off of that. With two units in the DUA, do you would you suggest I look at bringing in a Deadland sister? Without question, one of those knolls should be a village. I think I need to go in and update that article. <laughs> it, like I said, with this new one, with the with the reprint, it it changes the dynamic of what dice you want in the army dramatically. So, in all honesty, you need a black knoll and a black uh, village. Because this is on a three, you've got to go through another two turns of maneuvering. And if your opponent counter uh, maneuvers it back down another turn, you have to sit there. 
a village gets around that. A village gives you a 65-ish percent chance of getting the action you want with those guys, and you can tear up that mage army something fierce with it. Right, because the village is a melee, and the knoll is a, a missile. So missile. They, right. The village has a disaster that affects melee, but it has an melee face, and the knoll has a disaster that affects missile results, but it has a missile. So right. You want that option with your frost wings that can go either melee or missile really easily. Right. And you also want to increase your ability to stop spells from going off. Yeah. yeah. What I would yeah. suggest for the first march is a magic action here at the uh, campaign army. And I would put as many drain uh, magic spells on uh, the Lava Elf home army as possible. Yeah, I would use uh, uh, the Black Knoll at the campaign. And the reason being for the Mage Army is because the, the Acolytes and or the Apprentices, I'm sorry, not Acolytes, the Apprentices and the Magus have Missile Faces. So there's always the chance that you can get a hold of a Missile Face. Unless you get a disaster. Unless you get a disaster. But you're That's not right. really hurt for the for the missile results because you're about to cast magic. And and the advantage of uh, already having two frost wings so that the unit or I that what is the max that's magic not unit? necessarily what winners for or what um, uh, what that'll do. Up to a maximum of five per coffin. Right. Right, but my coffin's already full with those two units. No, it's not. You have ten that you can fill, and it's not per health; it's per unit in the DUA. Right now, you've got four. That that was one of the the controversial rulings when Fourth Ed came, or when uh, yeah, Fourth Ed came out, because you've got units that it counts for in the deadline uh, in the graveyard instead of health worth. If you had health worth, you would be going nuts on magic negation. I got you. But since it's units, it's a little bit harder to get a hold of those, which is one of the reasons why um, the deadlines began to scale with the current uh, iteration of the rules. So for every dragon you can bring to the game, the deadlines produces an extra unit in the DUA. So right now, you've got the equivalent of four units. Yep. I got you. All right, okay. so go ahead and roll your, uh, your magic roll. All right. Roll. Now, if you can, if you can, this could make a really lucky break. I, I see oh, five. Magic Drain is a three-cost three card. I would do the whole I'm rubber, your glue, cast Magic Drain on him, and then palsy. <laughs> so what? why was I so eager to get that Magic Drain out? Well, look at the first turn that the Love Elves did. You had a palsy on you. Yep. And you had a... Um, um, a dragon down your throat. What's all in here? Mages. Mages. Yep. Frost wings are all about denial. If you can control your opponent, you can really force them into some situations that they don't want to do. Thank you. Yeah, that's really good. The the all about that uh, denial trying to keep your opponent from being able to do anything while you just mm -hmm. do whatever you want. I think about what fly is. Yep. Essentially a form of denial. I'm looking at my second march, and I don't think I want to do anything with these missile units, but because I've got all these mages against my melee units, 
but I'm not anywhere near a melee phase. I got a lot of marching to do. So bringing in a death That's... hands is going to down from marching. I might as well do a missile action and well, then run away. Hold on. Look at your other options as far as uh, lands are concerned. Or as far as miners. You have two miners over there. One of them is blue and uh, gold. Well, not gold, but yellow. Yep. Bring in that miner. Give it a roll. Let's see what happens. Oh. There you go. Wow. That's some good luck. Up and ready to go. All right. Want to make a melee? I, I, I bet I should. Because I'm not going to get another good swing at mages like that probably ever. Exactly. Again. See, well, in this, you're mages. attacking the mages at their home with, it looks like, eight. <laughs> no. Nothing. Even then, I would have to overcome the palsy one more time. See that uh, denial going off there? Yeah. Yep, that black magic, it's there. And then those melee results, that was pretty good. The magic drain has yep. nearly crippled my ability to cast magic from... Uh, my home army, I'm going to have to end up consolidating somebody somewhere in order to even have an, uh, a magical offense, which, in this army, you need it. As far as reserves are concerned, um, there's a couple of things you can do. Scared. They're scared, I think. Why? Uh, other than the cursed bullets. Because that's really all you're gonna all you're gonna do, and when you think about it, with the amount of maging that you have, combined with your melee, what would you do? Well, I don't know. If I maintain if I maintain this army here, I maintain terrain control and I also provide your army here an extra target, which lets these armies free to do whatever they want to do, because it's unlikely you're gonna try to choose to target right. some army other than the weak one. So also I remember boost up your actions that way if I stay there. But I might sacrifice the majority of that force because from the tactic it doesn't sound like I'm looking at doing a lot of regenerative magic sacrificing is such a strong word think about it like this if curse bullets come come over to your home army all right and it kills one or two two pointers that's two more in your graveyard mm -hmm. combine that with a knoll that's going to get replaced with your deadlands over here on the next uh, on your next turn, why? Because you do want those six uh, those chances to negate magic, and with the four X or the four point uh, oh one rules, an ID icon will uh, negate magic. Even when they are in the dead unit area, they are still providing a boom to your army. Is what I'm saying. So yes, deny me the ability to focus down on a unit. Missile, in, I would put missile. Missile, gotcha. Oh. And the reason being is, now you have the ability to retreat these guys at the end of your turn, bring them over, and it gives you a little bit more choice of what you want to do if you don't want to do magic all the time. I gotcha. Um... So with that missile, I can do a magic action or a missile action. I probably want to do the magic action because I really, that's what right. I wanted to do with that army in the first place. Right. 
And like I said, the missile is there. You're not gonna. You're probably not gonna want to. You're probably gonna want to sit on that as long as you can, until your opponent starts moving it. That's a ten. Oh, that's a good one. This. Soiled ground. Yep. That targets the terrain, though. So if you You're guys right. get action on me, I'm going to lose some of my units. To the They're not going to counterattack, though, because they don't have volley. Oh, oh, and the other thing is that they have that Winter's Fortitude. Yes, this is this is using all. This is bringing everything of Frost Wings to bear right here. Okay, so I can do a soiled ground there. Yep. But I still have six magic. I th or four magic. Four magic. Yep. I'm gonna win that race. Exactly, because you're because they're fast and they'll shred the stuff on their next attack. So going after this guy is probably my best bet. Probably. Yeah, I'll take out that. Okay, so this guy goes bye bye. So I will make a missile yep. action. Oh. And, and I don't want to move that terrain. It because right. I don't have another knoll to bring in. You don't need to. to. The only thing you might want to do with that is to try and maneuver it down a little bit because six is melee. Yeah, I think I'll try that definitely because these okay. are my mess guys. Will you? Of course, I'm going to counter maneuver. <laughs> I I'll this little away here. Okay. Oh wow! So it looks not like bad. That's missile. Seven. Yep. You got six right here. Can't take the other guy out because he's a little skirmisher. Now, just curious. Uh, he still could hang on to that item, couldn't he? No, we can't. Eldarum count do not count as an ivory hybrid. They simply count as the color that they are. Oh, oh, yep, yep, yep. And that was a black item. Exactly. Oh, thank that is you. why you want. What's that? Thank you so much. I didn't notice that. Oh, yeah. That's the downside to Eldarum. You can just whittle, you can start racing right now. In all honesty. Because you got your hyper maneuver right here. You've got a good bit of maneuver right here. And then your mages have already done their job. You still have to worry about maybe two turns for your opponent to get these two mages, this one and this one, back here, and all three of these up there to even mount any type of uh, comeback. Because this is a highly luck-based force due to the the no Magi. And I hate to say that, but the Magi is what really kills the magic in this uh, thing, in this specific one, because you're generally getting two magic per Magus and generally one magic per uh, apprentice. That being said... Once it goes, it goes. <laughs> and we are going to attempt to magic here. Now, because of that, you can counter roll. Oh, shoot. Yes. You have five units in your DUA. <laughs> And this is another thing you have to realize about Frost Wings. Later in the game, Magic Drain becomes rather useless. Early in the game, it's your best tool, period. Why? Because you can uh, Magic Drain your opponent's terrain, and you can just deny them 
all game, either through uh, units you've put in your DUA or through Magic Drain. You really want to take somebody off, probably lose a friend over it. Do both. Put about six Magic Drain on a um, on an opponent and have some apprentices in there just for good measure, or in the opposing army just for good measure. <laughs> Like I said, yeah, you probably I, lose some friends over that one. I was just noticing that the um, magic negation counts all magic results and ID results up to a number, so the whole army gets to roll. Unfortunately, I yep. didn't get any. Yeah, but see, again, you're making me do what you want me to do. Yeah, I've, I've, I call that board control at this point. You've helped me get it to is. the point where I've achieved board control. Where it's I'm all about to... knowing what you have at your disposal and using everything in the army, not just missile or melee or maneuver. Think about it like this. What is the most, what is the craziest opponent that you can get a hold of that has the worst save rate? You've already proven that you can get six magic on a regular basis. Right? Yep. Lightning bolt him. That Rakshasa? Yes. Because remember, the, the Eldarum has a 50% safe chance. Yep. And he also has yep. cantrip. Yep. Lightning. <laughs> there we go. I'll, I'll do a missile attack. All right. There we go. That's a missile attack. He did. There's no need to roll. So I'm going to roll anyway because he does have uh, access to that item. Also, one of the things about the, uh, the, the dragon staff, it only takes effect on a dragon uh, or on a magic roll. Yep. The dragon summoning SAI? Yeah. All right. So that was a sword. Those are magic. That's done. At this point, your opponent is thinking whether or not they need to concede or if they can outlast you while you try and race and then turtle up to something and try and brute force their way through it. So that's what I'm going to try and do. That goes bye-bye. That sounds good. I think I'm going to roll for magic. Okay. Three... We're going to do a magic. Would you like to try and counter magic? Oh, Lord, that's going to be an insane counter magic. Go ahead and roll. Because magic negation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing. So, yeah, bad dice rolls happen. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to soil ground and bury that. Yep. Those two elder and well, they're there. And seven. That's enough. All righty, and then I'll roll out that missile action over here. Yep. At the beginning of your turn. After dragon attacks, but before any other marches have uh, been done, Winter's Fortitude kicks in because you have uh, um, a crosswing at uh, a terrain with air in it. Phew. Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> Level three have the air. Yep, and so I get to Winter's Fortitude, that unit yep. that got magic. Yep. One of the things is with this, if it 
if it don't work, there's not really any... Well, oh, wait a second. That changes things. I bring back a Apprentice. And that's what I'll be rolling for here. Oh, nine. Nine works. I cannot save that. Let's, let's, you can if you roll an ID. So if I go there, I'm dead. If I go here, I'm dead. The only thing I can do is stay back here and try and stall for time until I'm dead. I gotcha. So, so. With these frost wings, they've really maintained that board control until they've whittled you down to your magic units. Right. You take a and target priority is another big thing as far as frost wings are concerned. If you have a uh, something that targets something, oh, that's great. But most of the stuff that we've done has targeted armies with high priority targets in it already. Using Lightning Bolt where you need to on, say, monsters is always a good idea. I've only seen one monster with a 50% save chance. The Phoenix. Yes, exactly. That is my turn. Because I really can't go anywhere where I'm not safe, except for my reserves at the moment, which I have uh, maybe three... No, I have... Two more turns where they're safe if you decide to move that up to uh, Oh they're not safe at the reserve army either. Roll for magic. Hailstorm, yeah. It targets an army. Yep, so roll for magic. Saves. They're not producing saves at all, so that's what you got to watch out for with the hails. Well, they can produce one save per... Um, they have a one save face. And they have their ID. Three. So you have three mana there. I still do it. Yeah. Up oh, two saves. Not bad. Take this up to seven but, just to keep going and get that. Yep. Because <laughs> there's no there's no point in what I was doing over here anyway, so that's a better use of my turn to do that magic. I see that. Exactly. I, I forgot about one of my options. And that is one of the things about frost wings. I see why in your article you said don't split the armies, just worry about resurrecting them if you need them back yeah. because they're not going to stay in the BUA. Try to get some spells to soften them up. Yep. Five, that's good enough. That's two palsies. Now get your eighth face. Oh, jeez. I'd like to see this roll. Now remember, it doubles at the 8th face. Alrighty, rolling for missile. <laughs> oh! Ouch. Plus, six, plus 3 is 9. Oh, wow. That's 2... Four, five. Minus two from the palsy. That's three. Two, six, eight. That's a wipe. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for the lesson. Yeah. That was amazing, Kelrick. Well, this is just, again, it's one army. If I were... Going back and redoing it. Three points say one of these guys and one of these guys would become one of these guys. And then you have... Let's see, we got 
this dude right here. We got this dude right here. Ah. And the reason being is because the Magi is amazing when it comes is the best that we've got according to that, uh, according to mages. But yeah, look at that. Saves. And we still have enough magic to do something. Again, we'll do it again one more time. Saves and more magic to do something. Another one. Boom. Three magic. We're averaging about six to seven magic on this. And what is the most important spell for this army? A six mana magic. Yep, that's soiled ground. So, let's try something else. Imagine if we had two Moggies in there. So, we got... We'll do this. We'll do these yeah. guys. And then we'll roll the other Moggy twice. Okay? Or we'll roll the Moggy twice. So we'll put these in the DUA for now. Now remember, we are rolling this twice because we don't have a, a Moggy of another Moggy available. So we got one flight. And we got four magic. Ooh, that That's would have been eight magic and eight four magic. saves. Imagine that on a magic negation roll. I mean, that's a real having that's two Magi in this army would make it more consistent. And another thing, <laughs> let's take these guys out and let's add in the equivalent of two bear riders. On the maneuver. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. We had already five, but then we had eight and an ID, yep. right? Yep. No, that wasn't an ID. That was a save. On the melee. All right, so we got saves. What about the other one? ID. What's really fun is when you get his, uh, what is it? Where is it? When you get rend multiple times. Because of the new uh, distribution rules, it's, it, it's so nice as a player to, get a hold, to be able to get a hold of Moggies and Bear Masters. Because they offer you something that the other that the other rares don't or the other large dice don't and it's just it's nice because it really helps us specialize in it now if you did want to look through them and you did want to look through a comprehensive list of all of those uh, uh, all the dice in every army based off of the army feel free to stop by the Chronicles of Esfa at dragondice.thill.net and look up Kaelric's Guide 2 and your favorite race